bless the Lord. Bless come him, on, bless come him. On, come on, God is good. Yes, he's good. God yes, yes. To us. Surely this is the good. day that Surely. the Lord has made. Surely. Let us rejoice and yes, be glad. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll be coming from Psalms 35, starting at verse 1. It says, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand upon and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Last verse. Let them be a shaft before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Gracious and heavenly Father, God, we come to this moment of prayer, God. God, we come to give you glory, honor, and praise, God. We come to lift you up and magnify your holy and righteous name, God. We thank you for a brand new mercy sweet seat, God. We thank you that you woke us up bright and early this morning, God. We, we thank you for the activity of our lambs, oh God. We thank you for your blood that still redeems, oh God. God, we ask you to come into the midst on today, oh God. Let a fresh anointing fall Jesus, fresh in this Jesus. place, oh God. God, have your way on today, oh God. Someone needs healing, oh God. Someone yes. needs financial yes. blessings, God. Someone needs a home, oh God. Jesus. God, we ask you to bless the children as they're getting ready to go back to school, oh God. Send a covering over them right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask you to watch over them as they go back and Lord forth Jesus, to school, Lord oh God. Jesus. We ask you to watch over the bus drivers, oh God. Jesus. The bus aides, oh God. The teachers, the teachers' aides, oh God. The directors, oh God. The teachers, oh God. Yes, God. The whole school system, oh God. Yes. Those going to college and universities, oh God. Those in preschool, God. Yes, Those in daycare, oh God. Yes. God, we ask you to cover them, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you for this day, thank God. You. We give you glory, honor, and praise, oh God. We God, we ask you to come into the midst. Right, right now, now, oh God. Right Forgive now, us of all our sins and iniquities, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. We God, we ask you to bless those that's on their way, oh God. Give them traveling grace and mercy, oh God. God, we ask you to speak a word unto us Sunday, oh God. Unstop our deaf ears that we may hear, oh God. Let the word come forth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Let it prick our hearts, oh God. Let it give us a word, oh God, of encouragement, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, God. God, we thank you, God. Thank you. We thank you for your mercy, God. Thank we Jesus. thank you for your grace, thank God. You. We thank you for your loving thank kindness, you, God. We thank you for your blood, thank oh God. You. We thank you that you did not give up on thank us, God. You, we thank you that your hand is upon us, thank oh God. God, we just thank you, God. Thank you, we thank you that our pastor is in the yes, house God. on today, yes, oh God. Yes, God, you have to lift up her spirit and her yes, soul, oh God. In the name of yes, Jesus, God. Yes, God, we ask a special prayer upon our elder, oh God, our pastor, John L. Stevens, oh God. Yes, God, we ask you to send strength to his body, yes. oh God. In the name of the name Jesus, of Jesus, God. God, do only a divine healing that only you can do, oh God. God. We yes. declare and agree it to be so right now, God. In the name thank of you, Jesus, Jesus, God. God, we just thank you. Thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Hallelujah. God. We glorify your name, Hallelujah. God. We lift you up, God. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, God. Hallelujah. For you are worthy of all praise, oh God. Thank you, thank Jesus. Jesus. Hey, come on, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just ask you to give a special prayer upon this church on today, yes, oh God. We ask you to move in a mighty way, oh yes, God. Jesus. In the name of the Jesus, name of God. Jesus. Heal, deliver, and yes, set yes. free, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we ask this in your name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, yes, amen, 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 amen. 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 I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice.
Yes, 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 yes. We bring 
sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice and we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. Oh, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we all Sacrifice is a thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifice is a praise. Oh, we bring sacrifice and praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house. Of the Lord, as we offer up to you that sacrifice is a thanksgiving, as we offer up to you that sacrifice is a praise. Oh, the lion of Judah will bring every The victory again and again. Oh, the lion of Judah will break every chain and give to us the victory and give to us the victory and give to the. Again, 
Softly. A lot of times we come to church, right? And we sing certain songs that we've heard down through the years, whether old or whether they're new. But then every so often a song comes through and it's significant about what God wants to do in our life in a period of time. The song said, and he'll give to us victory. And he's not just going to do it one time, Missionary Joanne. But Pastor Stevens, the song said he'll do it again and again. And because I like winning, I kept saying again and again. He's given us victory repeatedly. Hallelujah. And give to us the. 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 Here's the part right here. Again, 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 
sing it, because I don't know. We can. And we come to. And we come to. And we come to. And we come to. We come to. Oh, refine the name of the Lord. Glorify his name. We come to. We come to. I came to glorify. I came to glorify. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. Glorify his name. Go ahead, Elder E. One more time, please. Glorify his name. Yes, 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 yes. Glorify his name. We come to 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 glorify his name. We come to, we come to, we come to glorify his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We come to, we come to, we come to glorify his name. Glory, God. Glorify his name. Glorify his name. I'm not even talking to y'all no more. Glorify his name. Hallelujah. But I'm talking to the spirit that come to glorify his name. I'm talking to eggs, chop out the presence that's come to glorify his name. Glorify his name. Lift his name on high. Say hallelujah yeah. to the Lord our God. He just gave us victory. He just gave us victory. And he said we'll get it over and over. Hallelujah. Over and over and over. Hallelujah. Over and over and over. Over again. I've come to glorify his name. i come to lift his name on high. i come to tell him thank you for everything that he's done. Thank you, Lord. For the things that you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you promised you'll do. I come, hallelujah, to lift your name on high. For you are our friend Omega. You are the first and you're the last. You're the beginning and you're the end. And that means, hallelujah, that you'll take care of everything in between. So I lift your name on high. For there's nobody like you in all the earth. I say hallelujah to the Lord our God. Hallelujah to the true and holy king. Hallelujah to the one that has all power in his name. Hallelujah to the creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the one who healed my body. Hallelujah to the one who saved my soul. Hallelujah to the one who blessed me with my family. Hallelujah to the one that's opened doors. Hallelujah to the one that's making ways. Hallelujah to the one that's providing for me. Hallelujah to the one that's maturing me. Hallelujah for what he promised he'll do. Hallelujah for what he's already done that he said he will do. Hallelujah. 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 I'll praise him by myself because he's been that good to me. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hey, hallelujah, God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Yeah, yeah, 
Yes, come on and clap your hands in the presence of the Lord. I want a church. Don't mind me. Don't 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 mind me. Don't don't mind me, Mama. I'm sorry, Pastor Stephen. I apologize, Elder hey! E. I, I apologize. Hallelujah. But when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all He's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I thank God for snatching me up out of the hands of the enemy, turning my life around, placing my feet, hallelujah, on solid ground. I have no choice but to give his name praise. I have no choice but to lift his name high. Mama, I know if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, if it had not been, if it had not been, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. So when I come, I say hallelujah to your holy and righteous name. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Thank you, LD. Hallelujah to the Lord our God. Prophet is Katrina, there's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Songwriter said, I've searched all over. And you know what, Missionary Aunt Joanne? I'm not looking no more. <laughs> My mind it. is made up. You done found it. There's nobody like him in all the earth. Nobody like him. And he is God alone. Glory. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's tough. Folks sometimes wonder if and where or why God. When you watch the news, when you read the newspaper, when you hear your neighbors talk, well, everything going on in the world, you wonder if there's God, why there's God. They do, they do. But Elder E, I'm comforted in realizing that there's nothing happening right now that he didn't warn us of that shall take place. He didn't allow it to just creep up on us, Pastor Stevens. But if you were connected to him, if you know where to find him, hallelujah, he warned us of the things that were to come. And I thank God that he's still warning his people. He'll still tell you not to do this and not to do that if we have an ear to hear. He's that kind of God. Think about the times you're growing up. Your parents will tell you, I don't want you hanging around with him. I don't want you hanging around with her. At the time, we didn't understand it. But as you get older, you start to look back and you think, oh, I, really, I see what they were trying to keep us out of, out, of, out of getting caught up with. And he's that kind of God. Loves us just that much, mama. He's still warning us today if we listen. Nothing happened. Sometimes it seems like this world is out of control. It's not out of control. It's going according to plan, according to what he's purposed. It's happening just like he said it would. But if you're not connected to him, if you don't have an ear to hear, you'll be lost, confused, like a lot of other folk. And I'm so glad that I'm no longer in that place. Come on, somebody. Come on, don't, are, are you glad that you had a family member or a neighbor? or somebody that told you about the goodness of the law and left it up to you what you wanted to do with it from there. But I'm so glad, hallelujah, oh, that I'm no longer lost. I'm no longer confused. And I realize even in the midst of everything going on, he's still in control. He still has the final say. I needed to tell God thank you today. That was personal. I was telling my wife that I needed to tell him thank you today. It was personal because I've seen God, Aunt Joanne. I've seen him witness living it now. That in a year's time, Elder E, God has changed my entire life. He's, uh, Elder Jackson, he's, ch he's changed my entire life. From August 21st today, uh, from August 20, 2022 to August 21st and 2021, God has changed my entire life. I don't live where I used to live. I don't work where I used to work. My, what God is doing inside of me is different than what it was a year. I've seen God change my entire life in a matter of a year. And there's nothing special about me or why he did it. He can do the same thing for anyone else that decides to trust him. And for some folk, it won't even take a year. He can do it much quicker. But I sat back and looked, Mom, and I said, God, you've changed my entire life. And I owe him. Hallelujah. I owe him. Thank you, Jesus. I owe him praise. I owe him that. Not just what he's done in me. A year ago, I was spending time driving back and forth to the hospital, visiting loved ones in serious conditions. And a year later, I'm no longer doing that because God has made a way. He's, he's a miracle worker. He's changed my entire life in a matter of a year. 
and I'm going to give him praise for the rest of my life. I said, I'm going to give him praise for the rest of my life because he did for me what he said he would do. I just had to hold on and trust him and have a testimony that he is a miracle working God. I'm a living testimony that what God has promised, God is able to do. And he'll do it for anyone else that trusts him. He'll do, I said he'll do it for anyone else that trusts him. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And if you were tuned in, you would take this with you for the week. He says that and gives to us yeah. the victory yeah. again. 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 And again. And again. And again. Victory. Victory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. Go ahead now. Come on, somebody. You Talk don't got to hear the song. The Bible says, Talk thanks Bible. be to God. That giveth us the victory. Folks get willing to give you a lot of things. God says, I'm willing to give you victory. Old churches to say it like this. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace. Yeah. Th listen, there's some things you got to do to get victory now. Hallelujah. Th 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 there's some contingencies that come with getting yeah. victory. If I hold my peace. And let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, the Bible says. Victory. 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 Victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, God. And the new church picked it up and said, I, and he'll do it again <laughs> and again. Surely he will. And again. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands and tell God thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. I'm sorry. I had to, had to leave y'all for a moment. I like what you're saying, Doc. I, I had to like leave y'all for a moment. But he's given us victory. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. We thank God for the presence of the Lord that is here. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and everyone that's pressed their way to be in the house of the Lord today. We thank God for those that are joining with us online. Amen. And we pray for those that are going to watch it with us later. Hallelujah. We give God glory on and praise for who he is, for he's what he's deserving. doing. He's deserving. He's Look worthy. at me and know that I'm a living testimony that God will do just what he said he would do. Yes. Didn't come yes. easy. Hallelujah. But when you look back at where God has brought you from, you say, I realize now that all things work together for the good. Come on. To them that love God. Hallelujah. And then and then the scripture even says that the sufferings of this present time. Listen at this. <laughs> Sometimes before victory comes you suffer, mama. Yes. Sometimes before victory comes you go through just a little bit. Hallelujah. Yes. But when you get on the other side. Yes. The Bible says and I'm a testimony that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Yes, God. With his glory that shall be revealed. Hallelujah. Talk that Bible. Talk that Bible. With his glory that shall be revealed. Hallelujah. Glory to your Glory, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Victory shall be mine. Hallelujah. Victory shall be mine. Oh, yeah. Come on, sir. Yes, yes. And let the Lord fight your battles. Yes, surely. The scripture says like this. It says, stand still this day ah. and see the salvation, see the salvation of the Lord. Of even Lord. in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of just what seems like madness on the news every day, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. All kind of pox is, is happening and, 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 and polio and, and all the stuff that you're hearing. All types of stuff is going on. But God still. Come on. All types of poxes going on. All types of vaccines for this and vaccines for that. Yes. And if you just, God bless you, hallelujah. But I yet believe and decree and declare the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Victory shall be. It's a cleansing Come on, age. you should touch yourself right now and decree and, decree and declare that victory shall be mine. Victory shall Why? Because he's a keeper. Hallelujah. Yes. He's a restorer. Hallelujah. Glory. He's a hedge of protection all around you. Shall oh, be, God. Shall be mine. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I <coughs> Glory to God. Amen. Thank God for being here again. Thank God That's for him. the presence of the Lord. Thank God for our leaders, our overseers, Sykes being in our midst. Our Pastor Stevens. Yes, yes, yes. Our Elder Jackson, our Elder E. Bless him, bless him. All the men and women of God and the children that are here. It's good to see you, Zier. Deke, Deke in the building, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, Big Mar. Big Mar got two Sundays on y'all. I'm just telling y'all, he's been here two Sundays in a row. <laughs> so, so I'm going to say, yeah, Zier, do me a favor. Deke, you hit that light over there, and Deke, uh, cross that row and hit that light That's in the right. back for That's us, right. please. <coughs> Deke, go get the other one, Deke. Deke. <laughs> thank you, Deacon Tim. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> hey, man, we thank God for being here. I'm going to try my best not to be before you long. Take your time, Elder E said there's some, f there's some uh, food downstairs waiting for us. Oftentimes you get refreshments, Preacher right. D, but today you got food. 
Yeah, you got food down there. You got nourishment down there now. <laughs> I've seen pans, multiple, multiple pans. Hallelujah. Um, I, had a <laughs> I had a dream on Friday, Friday morning. The Lord woke me up with a dream, Mom, and I was, um, I dreamt about our church, and um, it wasn't its current state. It was kind of a little bit in the future, Elder E. And uh, in the dream, um, there was, there were family members, I'll say it that way. There were family members here that are members of the family, but not active, if that makes any sense, right? So there were family members here that we don't typically see. And um, at one point, um, one of the family members kind of bust out with this song. Mind you, in the dream, this was Friday, it was actually unbelievable. Friday, I had this dream, woke up Friday morning, six o'clock in the morning, I was thankful to God uh, that he spoke to me, but I was sitting over there and I had a headache, a terrible headache in the dream. And just realizing this now, half the day yesterday, I was d down with what was like a migraine. So much so that I almost text LJ and Deacon James, like, listen, somebody might have to do this tomorrow because I just couldn't get myself together half the day, but didn't realize it. So in, I dreamt this on Friday morning before yesterday, and uh, in the dream, Pastor Stevens, you'll be glad to know that you were up, you were speaking, and uh, you were laying hands on folks. Um, I've seen you pray for a lot of folks. I've seen you, you know, pray and just being a man of prayer, but you were in the dream, in the service, you were laying hands on folks, and one of the people you laid hands on was me, actually, and... Uh, you came back up here to the pulpit and you were asking folks to, that wanted to like testify, but just tell God, thank you for what he did for, well, you know, what they did for them in that moment in that service. Uh, and before I can stand up, uh, one of the, uh, our, our family members, uh, um, folks that aren't active members, um, was in the church and they bust out singing a song, um, modern song. I uh, said, God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. They bust out singing that song. And I stood up to take my turn to tell God, thank you for what, because after you prayed for me, my headache went away. Come on. So I stood up to tell God, thank you for what he was doing and what he did for me. And all I couldn't, as soon as someone gave me the microphone to say something for standing over there, all I could do was cry because I was that yeah. level of relieved for, for, for what I was dealing with. So yeah. I'm saying that, uh, Pastor Stevens, A, to encourage you because uh, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what the enemy may have tried, and, and, and in addition to what our overseer Livingston told us the other day, there's a, s a period and a season, a time of recovery that's about to, I'm assuming, touch your body and, t and not just his body, but the, our church, our yes. building. Elder E, because in the church, in the service, uh, uh, our lighting was different. And I know that, you know, not long ago we were here cleaning or doing something. Right. You said you wanted to change some things. Yes, in the sir. Light. Yes, sir. But the lights that were, uh, that were here, I didn't see them. I just saw the effects and the vibe of what was, like, what, the what was going on in the service. And they were just a little bit softer kind of than what we've got going right now. Now, there's a lot of churches modern day that kind of dim the lights and real dark. It wasn't church wasn't like that. But it was definitely just a little bit softer than what we had right now. I can compare it to kind of uh, the time of day uh, where it's like dusk, yes, where the sky is kind of like blue and orange and all that kind of right. brindling together. It was just a real, real, real soft vibe, but the That's Spirit of the Lord was moving. And Pastor Stevens, you were laying hands on folks and they were recovering. Uh, Mon James, I'm glad that you're here. Um, I have something for you that you've asked us to bring a couple weeks ago. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, if it's okay with you, I would ask that you can come up and um, let me let me give that to you, uh, but Amen. Uh, Shan, I need you to um, come and anoint your hands, because if it's okay with you, um, Mon James, I'm gonna uh, ask Chantel to to pray for you if that's okay. Um, and the Lord showed me her laying her uh, left hand on your uh, what would be your chest area, and then her right hand and somewhere in your lower back. So. Um, mother, if you can grab them, if they get out of hand, just be mindful to, to take them. Uh, Shan, if you can do that, that would be awesome. Jesus, Jesus, to God be the glory. Just, just that healing service. So this is yours. We prayed over it this morning. And Shannon, there's some oil on that. On that, you can anoint your hands, and if you don't mind, Jesus. So it's not recorded. Jesus. Glory, God. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. 
Glory, God. Does anybody still believe in the laying on the hands? Oh, uh, yes. So, Mama, we're going to put one left Work hand on her chest area and your right hand on her back. So if you would stand to the side, probably help you out a little bit better. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory, God. Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Jesus. You're a healer, Lord Jesus. You're still a miracle worker. Yes, you are, God. There's nothing. Ashabiah, there's nothing too hard for you to do. Your word declares you sent your word to heal. Yes. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Show yourself, glory. God. Glory. Mighty and strong. Hallelujah. Show yourself, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Shadabiah. Mighty and strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 God. Bless your wonderful name. Yeah, God. Oh, yeah, God. Shaya Shaya. God, you're able. Thank you. Oh, God, you're Jesus. able. God, you're able, Lord Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We it decree and declare so. recovery. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. In the mighty yes. name of Jesus. God, you're able. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord. Oh, Shia, yeah. hey. Bless your holy name, God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Show up, God, and have your way. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're a healer, God. You're a deliverer. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yeah, God. Higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, God. Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Oh, Shia. Yeah, God. Oh, 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 oh Lord. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh Lord. You made it fail. God made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, everything that the devil tried, everything that the devil tried, God made it. God made it. God made it. God made it fail. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shout. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gives to us the victory and he gives to us the victory again 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 and again hey alabasa bless your name god glory lord jesus yeah yeah glory god Come on, clap your hands, tell God thank you. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Glory, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes, God. Glory, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Overseer Sykes, we thank you. Elder Stephen, Pastor thank Jesus. You, Jesus. We thank you because us <laughs> we realize, I realize, that what we are able to uh, uh, receive, what we, what we oftentimes can take for granted, but what we have here is just a result of the, the foundation and the work and the prayers that you guys did at, at the very beginning. Hallelujah. 
And I thank God that we can still walk in the midst of this. This is what this is what impresses me about God. I know we're moving a little bit unorthodox on this morning, but this is what impresses me. This is why I, I, I love God, because even in the midst of a few of us. Yes. Preacher, even in the midst of just a few people right. that come here and gather. He loves us enough and cares about us enough, Elder Jackson, just to come show up. and still show up. Show up. I, I, I can guarantee you there's some preachers that won't come here and, 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 and take an engagement because the, the numbers don't quite right. match up to what they need and what they want. There's some natural men, men and women, yes. singers even, that wouldn't come and fellowship with us just because of what our numbers look like. But God, if, if, it, it just, it just kind of shows you and tells you just how far we've gotten off the path. Right. Because God himself is so spirit. He shows, he'll, he'll send his spirit down to show up. up. He shows Re up. Regardless of how many or how, 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 how few or how much is here. Yes, sir. And, I, and I thank, oh God, mama, I thank him for it. That, that, he, that he loves us enough to she'll show up and be in the midst. He'll call somebody out of a situation when you feel like you're in it by yourself and say, today is your day to recover. Today is your day for healing. Today is your day for deliverance. Today is your day for a miracle. Today is your day to come up. Hallelujah. Oh, God. He's a personal God. He's a personal God. He's a personal God. He won't give you what I need, and he won't give me what they need. He'll come and give us exactly what we need at the time that we need it the most. And gives to us the victory, and gives to us the victory, and gives to us the victory again, again. Again, 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 and again. He's that kind of God. Listen, my my nephews and nieces sometimes look at me like I'm like, oh, this man is crazy. But check me out, Deke. Listen to this. I know you decided. Let me, Deke decided not to play football this year, everybody. But, but I know you decided not to play. But listen, in sports, you tell me this. When you win over and over again, at the end of the season, that makes you a what? A, ch a champion, right? Same thing as a star, but there's a lot of stars that still lose. But when you win over and over again, it makes you a, a champion. And when you go out there and do all that sweating and that hurting and playing over and over again, are you doing that to lose? No, sir. You're doing it to what? Because your goal is to be a what? Talk to me. Your goal is to be a what? A champion. And you guys came to church on the day today. Well, God's saying that you have, De'Ara, yes. the opportunity to take a championship back home with you. Come on now. You, you can take a victory. You. You can take a win, victory, back home with you. Because sometimes at home, uh, the, there's, 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 some, there's, some, there's some losses. There's, there, there, you know, we're, we're not on the winning side. But you came to church on a day where God is saying you can take victory back to your house. I was already going there. I was already going there. You, you can take victory back to your house. You can take victory to your Come mom, on, to victory! your dad. You can take victory to your brothers and to your sisters. He, he, he's given us the chance to take victory back with us when we leave here today. Come on. So if we say the benediction right now and go eat the food that Elder E and Andre Joanne prepared for us, you already have had victory. All right. Anybody else bring down so let me ask you this question. When you win, do you just go sit on the sideline like, oh, another day? What do, you do, what do you do when you win? Celebrate. What do you do when you win? So we were celebrating... <laughs> Victory, but you guys were sitting there like we lost. Are you with? Are you with me? Are you with me? We, I was celebrating victory because I said I, I sang the song that said, "And He gives to us what." Come on, you, you're with me. Don't, don't lose me now. He gives a, He gives me what? 
And he does it when? Again and again and again. So, so, so I'm saying this to you because when we're celebrating victory and we're all on the same team, you should be celebrating victory. I can't celebrate victory and then you guys are losing because that means we're on the wrong team. But we're on the same team together. Yes. You understand me? D, I know you're not playing this year, but do you, do you understand me? Okay. Amen. And he gives us the victory. And he gives us the victory. L. Jackson, thank you so much. Again. And again. And again. Come on and clap your hands for victory. Celebrate with us today. Celebrate with me. Celebrate with us. Celebrate with me, De'Ara. Celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate victory. Celebrate victory. Celebrate that God gave you victory. Celebrate that God gave you victory. Hallelujah. Celebrate that you can take victory back with you. Glory God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's that kind of God. He's that kind of God. We're going to try to move forward. We're going to try to move on. So, that's it. Let's just move on. Today we're going to try to talk on the subject, subject that the Lord gave me from our dream, uh, that this is our season to recover. This is our season to recover. This is our season to recover. It's our season to recover. You can take that however it applies to you, but this is our season to recover. He's saying it to us as a body. This is our season to recover because just earlier, early, actually the beginning of the year, the Lord told us that this is our year to gain, to gain, to grow, gain, and to gather. Hallelujah. And I said to myself, I said, God, does this go, <laughs> does this line up with what you told me early in the year about this is our year to grow, gain, and to gather? Because I can't speak for anybody else, but I've definitely experienced some growth. Hallelujah. In this year. Come on, somebody. I, I, I was telling, telling my wife, I said, if we didn't have nobody else to look at, if we could, didn't have anybody else to look at, if you couldn't do it on a personal level, we can just simply look at our, and, and El, forgive me, but we can simply look at our Deacon James and say that we see growth <laughs> and that young man alone. Hallelujah. So God said that this is our year to grow, to gain, and to gather. Hallelujah. And it's up to us what we did with it if we decided to, if we tried God to gain. But I'll give a testimony uh, uh, because a couple weeks ago I shared with you guys that the Lord opened the door for me to step into a new career, and he opened the door for a position that didn't exist. So, so come on, come on. He's a door opener. <laughs> he, what, he's, a, he's a what? He's a gentleman. He'll open the door for you. Yeah. And I thank God for it. <laughs> yeah. I, th I thank God for it because it allowed me to gain a little bit more than what I've, than I've had before. Listen to this, Missionary Joanna and Joanne. In three weeks' period of time, I started this new position. Three weeks. I I've, I've recorded a podcast. <laughs> For the first time ever, right? Elder E, this week coming up, yes. I have a meeting with the vice president of a bank. Yes, sir. Me, just me and him. Yes. And, he, and, he, and guess who's paying for lunch? <laughs> vice president, VP. <laughs> right? Three weeks alone. A vice president with a bank. I, I barely get a teller, a teller if I go in the bank sometime without waiting in line. But in three weeks, this is, this is what God has done. Amen. Three weeks. And, and I've been invited. I was telling Deacon James, I've been invited to a suite for, at, at a baseball game. With local businesses, and they, the, on, on Thursday, he said, y your ticket will be at will call. We'll, we're looking forward to seeing you when you get there. This has all happened in a matter of three weeks. Gre greater, gre greater than even than that, because the people that we'll be rubbing shoulders with are people that, that, that affect change and, and things that affect our state and our area here. I sent Deacon James a, 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 an email a couple days ago, and I also lie, sent it to Sister Betty lie. for a nonprofit uh, grant uh, that the city has, the city of Trenton has, for two for four million dollars, for nonprofits to take advantage of this grant to do things in the in their organization. That if I wasn't in that position, I would have probably not known what was going on. Amen. This has just all happened in a matter of three weeks of of of, of, God, of God opening the door. So so trust and believe that when He says and giveth us victory again and again and again, I'm. In another three weeks, I don't know what I'm going to be telling you, but, but, I'm, but I'm trusting God to, to continue to do the things that he said he would do. And in this house, the, the things that he said he would do in this house for us to grow, for us to gain, and for us to gather. So as God is telling us now for the remaining of this year that this is our season of recovery, it lines up with gathering. It lines up with gathering because uh, 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 I'm going to go to farming here. Uh, um, 
for the remainder of the year, I think starting in August or September, we're, uh, folks celebrate this as harvest season. If you, if you live anywhere where you see some corn stalks and all that type of stuff growing out of the ground, over the course of the next 30 to 60 days, that corn won't be in the ground anymore as stalks because folks would have harvested it. They, they, they would have went to recover what they planted earlier in the year to get the gains of, 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 their, of their work, of their, of their efforts. And God is telling us, and he told me through our dream, that we're entering the season of recovery. That this is our time, hallelujah, to recover anything that, 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 that God has told us we can have. If your body has been sick and afflicted in this year, God is saying for the rest of this year, this is your time to recover. If you've lost or missed an opportunity that God has had for you throughout this year or in years prior, God is saying that over the course of the next four months, it's your time and season to recover. You can say, well, I'm not missing anything. Well, let's go back a couple years when our blessings, as our LDE just told us not long ago, were hovering over the building and we couldn't get them. God is saying that for the rest of this year, this is our season as a body, as a ministry to recover what God has promised us. I can't speak for you, but God already in a matter of 30 to 40 minutes have told us that I've got victory and I'm about to recover. Hallelujah. It sounds like that things are about to get better than they are right now. If only, if only, if only, if if only, if only, if only, if only we believe. Th th those are the kind of words I like, mama. Yes. Victory? Victory? Deacon Tim and recovery? That's success. Th th those, those are the kind of words that I like. Success, successful. I, I, I like those kind of words. Victory and recovery. It motivates me. It inspires me to say that God is moving. And I don't want him to move without me. Hey! Whatever God, yo, Sha, whatever you're doing in this season, yeah, Lord, don't do it, it without, me. without me. Include me in. Elder E's era was saying like this, Lord, if you're passing our blessings, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have a blessing for me. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you're going to bless my sisters. I'm, I'm glad that you're going to bless my brothers, God. But if you're passing our blessings, God, in this season of recovery, Lord, please have a blessing for me. Have a blessing with my name on it. Have a blessing that will impact me. In this season of recovery, in this season of recovery. I don't, I'm not expecting, Mama, everybody to be excited, Elder Jackson, in this season. That's all right. I'm not expecting it because, because, because some folk ain't looking for nothing. They can't see it now. They can't see it now. We, we but if God is saying it's a season to recover, there's something that he wants to give his people. Our pastor was standing and he was teaching the word of God. And then he began to lay hands on folks. And I was one he laid hands on. Yes, and I, and recovered. I, I recovered. Yes. I was one of the ones that he laid hands on in the dream. Yes. And I recovered. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. It excites me because it shows that, that he's going to be back and better than what he was before. Yes. But in the midst of that season, in the midst of that time, whatever tries to hold me down. <laughs> I'm going to be able to recover from. <laughs> I, I will be able to recover from. Because what he gave me victory. And, and, and victory. Yeah. Again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. Season. Glory, God. Glory. Season of recovery. Season. Hallelujah. Season of recovery. Open your Bibles to Ruth, chapter 2. Yeah, we're going to see what sis talking about. What's well, sis? Ruth chapter 2. It's your season of recovery. I'm a living witness. I can't say it enough. I've seen God change my whole life in a year's period of time. I'm saying to the day, in a year's period of time, I've seen him change my whole life. Yes. Not saying it didn't come with challenges. Not saying it didn't come with some struggles. But I see that the outcome made everything that I had to endure mm -hmm. worth it. Mm -hmm. And when God changes your life and your heart is right with him, mm -hmm. it impacts others that are around you. It affects 
those that are around you. Being in the position that God opened the door for me to be in mm. allowed me to see that there's an opportunity for us to go and get some funds to help us do some things. I, I, I don't know how, I, how we would have seen it if I wasn't in the position. But as soon as it came across my desk, DL, you got to see this. Because this is something that we can go after. Season of recovery. Ruth chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. I don't know if you ready to read like I need you to read. <laughs> Yo, hold on. <laughs> Elder E, we miss this. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Mom Livingston was here a few weeks ago, and uh, I, I, ain't, I mean, Elder E is a bomb reader. I'm okay myself, but don't I ain't met nobody in this world yet that, that read like Mother Sarah. Oh no, so no, no. Mother Sarah was reading from Mom Livingston, <laughs> and I looked at Gabe and I said, "Yo, you got to step your reading game up." <laughs> 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 now, right. that, now that bar is, is pretty high <laughs> compared to Mama <laughs> Sarah, but it, it, I, I started messing with them so much so that we were on social media and there was a service and this preacher was reading, and they were talking, screaming at the preacher like she was. The, she's screaming at the reader like she was the wrong, <laughs> like she was the one <laughs> preaching. What did I do? Sent to the gate, man. Look, you got to step your reading game up. <laughs> Why? Because out of mouths of two or three witnesses. <laughs> 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 so we're going to see. So listen, now that all that said, we're going to see where you're reading at today. <laughs> I'll tell you, starting off wrong because he ain't got a microphone. He gonna read. <laughs> I'm saying they're not going to hear you. <laughs> Ruth chapter 2 in that verse 1, sir. You gonna t- <laughs> going down to verse 3, please. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth. Of the family of Elimelech. Good. <laughs> Elimelech. <laughs> and his name was Boaz. And Ruth and the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me go now, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Verse 3. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. All right, pause one second. We're going to go down to 8 to verse 11 Elimelech. after this. But uh, 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 So Elimelech. we all know the story of Ruth, right, Elimelech. or we should. Uh, um, Ruth was married um, to Naomi, um, who had a husband herself and uh, had two sons who married off. And, and, and we know that um, Naomi's life and fate kind of took a turn when her husband passed away. And uh, she also lost uh, uh, both of her sons. Yes. So here she is now, a widow woman, res- respected and you know known her 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 area uh, uh, of Moab, but uh, and, and she lost her two sons. So it's now it's just her uh, widow and and then her two daughters-in-laws. Uh, uh, and she told them, she said, "Listen, um, you know things have kind of took a turn in my life, and obviously it affected your life." Uh, she said, "So why don't y'all just go ahead now and uh, pack it on up and, and go on back to your family?" Uh, uh, and, you, and you guys know the story, right? So and and she said it and. At first, the daughter's like, no, no, you know, we're going to be with you. And she told him again, she said, listen, if I was to marry again, she said, you would have to wait for me to find another husband. You would have to wait for me to, you know, uh, to, to have another child. And then you would have to wait for them to grow up, for them to be able to marry you again. So y'all just go ahead and pack your stuff on up and, and, and go on back home. Right. One of the daughters said, you know what, okay, you know, I, I, I'm going to go on back. But uh, uh, Ruth, Ruth, which is uh, uh, the main character in the story, decided, she decided, because our Deacon James told us last week to make a decision and to choose ah, wisely, she yes. decided, hallelujah, to, to that I'm going to stick with Naomi. You all know this famous scripture where she says, uh, I'm go- y- y- you're going to be my people, your people is going to be my people, and I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to dwell in the midst of you. And because we know the outcome of the story, it turned out to be a wise decision on her yes. part. So, 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 so what I like about Ruth and what we read in the second chapter here is that now they decided that we are going to be kin one to another. You're going to be my mom and be your daughter. We're going to make this relationship work. If I win, you win. If you win, we win. We're, we're going to do this thing together. But I like the fact that Ruth had an attitude not to just sit and wait for something to happen. She went to, uh, to, to, to Naomi and said, I, I'm going to go on ahead now and, and, and I'm going to try to link up in this, in this neighborhood here, in this area, in this country, uh, where, where because, because this is where you're from and, and you've told me or somehow uh, that, 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 that you have a, a successful 
uh, man or successful uh, leader in this area that maybe I can link with his people and, and go to work and, and, and earn us a living so that we're not just sitting and waiting on something good to happen to teach us. It, teach it. She had a mentality to, to, to not just sit back but to go after what God has told me I can recover. If we leave here today and God give us all this victory, he gave us all this victory and he said it'll happen again and again and then he told us that this is a season of recovery. If we leave here today and go back and don't change anything, don't take as our pastor would say a self inventory of ourselves and, and find out what God wants us to recover or what God's saying we can have victory in. When you don't get yours, there will be nobody else to blame but yourself. but yourself. But if you have a mentality and an attitude similar to that of Ruth where you say, I'm not just going to sit back and wait for something to happen. I'm going to be proactive. Everybody say proactive. Be proactive. Proactive in trying to go and get what God told us we can have. Oftentimes, as believers, we're reactive to stuff. Oftentimes, just as, as, as people of color, we're reactive to, 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 to stuff. It, 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 we don't go and get life insurance or, or go and try to get money and preparing for, for the loss of loved ones until someone passes away. And now we got to sell chicken dinners and, and, and do this and do that to get the money up to put somebody away the right way. We, we're often reactive to, we, we don't change our diet, amen, because our family history is bad. We wait until we go and get a doctor's report and they say your blood pressure is sky high and you need to stop eating salt and stop doing this and stop doing that. That. We're reactive before we decide to make a change. But if we're proactive, everybody say proactive. proactive. If we're proactive about trying to, to be and go and receive the things that God has promised us, we'll have an attitude of being uh, of initiative, of going, uh, I'm not going to wait, I'm going to go get it. That, that I don't have to wait until the doctor to tell me, son, you need to cut back on this and cut back on that. I know my family history. I don't have to wait for, 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 for a miracle to just drop out of the sky because I've, I've done that for about 30 years. But now, as I'm nearing uh, the Ladder. So, so some middle years of my life, I'm realizing that I have to go and be who God has called me to be. Come on. Come on Ruth had the attitude that I'm going to go and I'm going to try to work in the fields. She had the attitude that I'm going to go and work in the fields. And LDE, what I found out in studying is that she didn't go and say, I'm, I'm going to try to go and get the same amount that the reapers are getting, right. the people that were working the field. She just wanted some leftovers. Yes, yes. She, she only wanted to recover what was left behind after the workers went and did their jobs. And, 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 it, and, and, it, and, it, and it struck me, uh, women of God, I need your ear here. It struck me because the Lord has been telling us, to telling the women of God here that it's time to go to work. It's time to go to work. And I was watching something uh, uh, on, on the Wild Life channel uh, or Discovery channel. And what I found out is that although the male lion gets all the praise as the king of the jungle? Do you know the, the women, the female lions, are the ones that do much of the work? The honey. They, they're the ones that do much of the work for the pride to survive. They're the ones that have to go out and hunt together for the pride to have a meal. The men get a lot of the praise because they're there for protection. They're there for authority. They're there for, 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 for just the representation. But it's the female lions are the ones that go out and do the work. But what I realized, Prophetess Katrina, uh, Mom Jones, I'm glad you're here. What I realized is that if the female lions don't work together, the pride won't be successful. The female lions have to have a plan of, of attack of how they're going to go out and hunt the next meal. And they've got to do it, thank you, sir, together. They can't do it where I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. The, the, the success of the pride lies on the fact of the women working together. The success of the church. Do I even have to finish the statement? The success, mother, of the church. And, and, and as much as you raised us to the man to stand in the gap and the man, as much as you raised us that way, behind the scenes, it was you and the mothers and the evangelists that were doing the work of the ministry. We can't expect to be successful in this house. And the women are not together. I don't care what man is up here holding the mic. If the women are not together, the ministry won't be as strong as it needs to be. I've used this example before. There's things in, my, in our home that, that I think about handling as the man of the house. But I've realized that if it wasn't for that woman, the, the, the woman that he gave me, thank God, this house would have fell apart a long time ago because she's the worker behind the scenes. 
I might be the one up front and, being, and, and often recognized, but it's her behind the scenes that's keeping things together. Behind the scenes, it's the women that have to come together for this ministry to go where God wants it to go. And I'm thankful because God is not saying that, oh, y'all done messed up and it's over. He's saying that this is the season to recover. You have, a, we have another chance. We might not have got it right through eight months of this year, but we have another chance. He's, he's given us more time. And let me tell you something. Time <laughs> is speeding up. The old churches say time is winding up. Time's not just winding up anymore. T time is speeding up. Scientifically, the days have been shortened. Oftentimes, I stand in my backyard and I, and I look at where the sun rises and sets, where the moon rises and sets. And I realize, as a matter of fact, it just happened a week ago. I said, I said dear, just a few weeks ago, the sun was going down at 9 o'clock. Right now, at 7 o'clock, you start seeing the sun start going down. We're already about to be in fall season. Time's not just winding up. He's, it's speeding up. And it shouldn't surprise us because the Bible says that for the very elect's sake, he has to shorten the days. Verse 8, sir. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 8. Thank you. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter? Go not unto glean in another field, neither go from hence. But abide here fast by my maiden. Stop right there. Go not to glean in another field. Don't go. <laughs> don't go looking for another place to go. Don't, don't go looking for another place to worship. You're, you're in the right space. All right. We're just not doing, haven't been doing the right things. Has anybody, oh God. Has anybody ever been in the right place and just not doing the right things? Are there, are there any opportunities in your life that you can look back and say, man, I was in a good position here, but because I was irresponsible and unlearned and didn't go through the struggle and through the fight, I didn't appreciate the goodness of what God had given me. And oftentimes, hallelujah, you can be in the right place, but not doing the right things. It's not the season and the time to go looking from church to church. It's, it's not the season and the time to go saying, oh, I I need a new pastor and oh I need a new mother and, and I need to hear this and, and I need to do that find you so somewhere to stand and say God use me in this place build me in this place have your way in this place why because if God can change you if God can change me he can change it if he can change you he can change it if he can change me from who I was before I come to know God, he can change any situation that I'm dealing with. Oh, God, when social media is up the way that it needs to be, that's, a, that's something that needs to be tweeted out right there. If God can change you, he can change it. If he can fix the way that I used to think, then he can change any situation that I'm facing. If he can heal my heart, he can change any situation that I'm in the midst of. If God can change you, God can change it. Because the Bible says, is there anything? Sir. Ruth chapter 2 and that verse 9. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap. And go thou after them. Have I not charged all the young men that they shall not touch thee? He said, you're good here. You found the place that you need to be. And I've told Oh, God. How many times have, our, uh, have you heard our overseer Sykes say that, that, that been not, nobody better not come in here and mess with you on what? On her watch. Right. Boaz told Ruth, he said, you're good here. I told the men that they won't bother you. No, you, you, you do what I'm telling you to do, and you don't have to worry about nobody else. Right. Every leader is not willing to put themselves on the line for us, for you. you, you you're not going to find leaders after God's own heart in this day. Seen something online this week, and there was a preacher fussing at the people for the church, not buying them a piece of jewelry. And I said, God, I thank you. I said, God, I thank you. Yes, he did. That we don't even have to deal with that kind of stuff here. Not, not now. Not, not, not just now. But in the years that I've been under these, this man and woman of God, not ever. 
part of the reason I feel some kind of way, uh, I've been to just a couple, just a couple churches I've been to, and, and folks will say, hey, do you want to take up your own offering? No. Just do what y'all do. Let me preach and sit down. We're going to go on about our business. Why? Because I've never seen our leaders do that. I'm going to do what God told me to do. What you give me is what you give me. I go to work every day, and we're going to be good regardless. I've never seen my leaders going and saying, oh, giving me this much and giving me that much. I've seen them give more than they've taken. So why would I come and try to reinvent the wheel and, yes, let me take up an offering and find some scriptures to make something seem this way and that way so I can get you guys to give me what I want to have? I didn't come from that. I judge every leader by what I grew up under. I, 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 I thank you, too, for, for raising us the way that you've raised us. I'm honored the fact that I've come up under this old school way of, way of, of, of knowing God. Didn't get the Holy Ghost from a certificate on Google. All right. I got it from calling on Jesus down on my knees. Not knocking adjustments and changes that are for the better and that are still aligned with Scripture. But I thank God for the ways that we've been taught in this house. Don't prophesy for, 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 for money. Don't preach a word to make you feel good. Sometimes it ain't going to feel good. I had to tell Mom Limiston when she was here the other, a couple weeks ago, I had to thank her. Not that I made it. Oh, Mama, I made it. No. But I'm much better now than where I've ever been in my life. And I had to thank her for all the times she's called me out and put me on blast. And the church is full of people. Because it was those experiences that pushed me to be and could become better. She tells a testimony of how Bishop Sykes sent her to the bathroom to clean the toilets. I knew I had pride issues and, and high-mindedness because of being an athlete. I knew that stuff. So when we came to the church to clean, I took advantage of her testimony and said, I'm LJ, I, you do what you need to do up here, I'm going to clean the bathrooms. Why? Because I know there's some stuff in me that God needs to work on. Right. And before anybody has to tell me to go and do it, I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. Right. Thank you, sir. Humble is what I needed. And humble is what he gave me. But I submitted. I submitted to it because it's what I know I, I need it. Oftentimes we know the things that we need to do and be better in. And we still resist and fight against it. When the Bible said it's hard to kick against the prick, that wasn't just to Saul on his road to Damascus. That was for even us today. Why kick against what you know we should and you should be doing? We've got to submit to the will and the purpose that God has in our life, even when it doesn't feel good. Amen. I had a headache half the day yesterday. Half the day. Kids coming in the room. I all go at one point, Corinne was kissing my forehead. Like, Daddy, it's beautiful outside. You're in here laying down. What's going on? I, I, was, I was like, but, but, but something in me said, I, you, you've got to get up and try. You've got to get up. You've got to get up. And in doing so, God, when I opened my Bible, he began to speak to me things that will help out for today. We've got to submit to what God wants to do in our life, in our church. We don't... Go ahead, Gabe. Sir. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a, a, a thirst, when thou art a thirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Verse 10, then she fell on her face and bowed, her, bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Verse 11, and Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath been fully showed me right. all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how, that, how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity. And, out, and art come unto the people which thou knewest not heretofore. Boaz said, I, I made a way for you to work in this field. I made a way for you to go out here and do what you need to do to help yourself and your mother-in-law. God said, I've charged the people, similar to our overseas, I've charged them not to bother you. You ain't going to have to worry about nobody bothering you here. He said, and not only can you come here and work, but when, when, you, see the, when you see the workers go and, and get something to drink, you go and get something to drink. You, everything that you need is in this place. Oh, God, that's a word right there. 
Go to chapter 3, Gabe, and go to verse 10. Come, uh, you know what? Just, just stop. And, and somebody just say this with me. Everything that you need, Everything is, need. Is, in this place. is in this place. Oh, God. Say it. Oh, Lord Jesus. You may not see it right now, but let me tell you this in the spirit. Everything that you need is in this place. It's here. It may not look like it to you, but it's here. When I, when I came to prayer meeting and I found God, <laughs> it didn't look like much was going on. But by the end of that prayer, everything that I needed was in this place. Pastor Stevens used to sing it like this. He used to say that everything that we need is where? Down where? At the altar. And, and, and let me tell you something. It's still there. It's, it's, mm, it's still there. It's, it's still there. It's, it's still there at the altar. But how many of us have the attitude, like Ruth, to work? Or are we so used to, to mom coming and, and, and laying her hands on us? Are we so used to her, 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 her calling us after service and telling us the rest of what God needed us to do? Are we so used to somebody having to call us out to tell us that we've got to get back into our prayer closet? Are we so used of the church having to call for fast for us to realize, God, I need a little bit more strength? Are, are we so used to the way things used to be? That we're not willing to move forward and how God is telling us to move forward today. So, so accustomed to things happening. Oh, God. So accustomed to things happening a certain kind of way that we're not willing to step outside of that and still follow me as I follow Christ. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Breathe, sir. I'll breathe, 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 breathe. Uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Oh, 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 Lord. Go ahead, sir. Read it. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. For thou hast showed more kindness in, thy, in the latter end than at the beginning. Inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Verse 11. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. So, 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 so the Lord was talking to me about this, and some may feel that it's not my position or place to even say it. But. <laughs> so, 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 so as the story goes on in Ruth, uh, 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 Naomi tells Ruth after she's found favor and started working and started, you know, being able to bring back some provision. Uh, uh, she told her, she said, hey, she said, at this time of the year, Boaz is, is you know, out there, he's, he's, he's threshing wheat. They're, they're, they're getting their harvest together. She said, so what I'm going to tell you to do is go and lay at his feet. Uncover his feet and lay there. And as I started studying and reading, the uncovering of the feet was just simply a sign of submission. It, 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 some folk viewed it as being um, a sign of promiscuity, but, but, the, but, the, but, but different theologians began to, 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 to adjust that because they said if it was a promiscuous move, if it was a move of her being just a free, given woman, then she wouldn't have went to his feet. She would have went to his upper parts of his body. But in going to his feet, it symbolized her submission. So that when Boaz realized that, whoa, 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 so, um, uh, 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 something, something's not right down there because he's no longer covered, and he saw her, it was, his sign to it was a sign to him that this woman is submissive, but it was also a sign of her giving to him that I need and I can have your covering. The scripture says that Boaz told her, he says that everybody in the neighborhood, everybody around knows that you have been a virtuous woman. And, and, there's, and there's folks, there's people, there's men, and there's both, there's women that, that are looking for, 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 oh, God, help me, Jesus, for life partners, Mom Jane, Ma Joan. They're, they're looking for, for life partners, but how we present ourselves is not in a way where someone can say, oh, that's a, a good man right there, or that's a, a virtuous woman right there. We have to be cautious in every way we present ourselves when we're expecting God to do and grant us something in our life. I told you that God opened the door for me to be in this position where I'll be, uh, thanks be to God, rubbing shoulders with some all types of people from all different levels of success. And I've been telling my wife for the last three weeks, I said, God is now going to require a whole lot more of me so that in this place and in this position, 
I don't mess up the name that he wants to develop. Because if I start moving in, 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 in these circles unseemingly, then how can God be glorified although he blessed me with the position? But if I'm strong enough to maintain my character and integrity as I start moving in these different circles and places, not only will be a blessing for me, but God will also be glorified because I didn't mess up his name and the opportunity. We have to be mindful of every way we put ourselves out and present them to people. Because I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a <laughs> prior to her, I was one of them ones. I'm a, I was one of them ones prior. To, I was one of them ones. So, so, and, 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 and being one of those ones, I know the difference of if that's a, a good woman there or just a woman for a temporary period. Y'all, I know you, everyone don't like it. I, I, but, but I have to tell the truth. Because I, I can tell the difference of the ones that was, oh, that's a good one over there or just one that I can have for a moment. So if, 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 if we want more, then more is what's required of us. More is how we have to present ourselves. More is what we have to maintain. Because like Boaz told Ruth, he said, everyone around knows that you're a virtuous woman. He said, yeah, yeah your husband died. You, you didn't go looking for rich guys and poor guys. You stayed with the, 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 your, your mother-in-law for God to give you the opportunity to recover. And if we want the opportunity to recover, we have to maintain how we conduct and how we present ourselves. We have to maintain it. I have to be mindful of, of, of every high, every hand that I shake because I need God to be glorified. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't put me in a position to, to make a mockery of who he is and what he wants to do. He put me in a position to connect and get the resources that our people need. I have to maintain integrity and character. And I, Randy is not strong enough to do it on his own. I need God. I need his Holy Ghost to help me stay focused. To help me be mindful. Elder, what's the scripture, Elder? How can a young man cleanse, cleanse his way? Come on. I have, to, I, have, I have to do that, Elder Jackson, because I'm not strong enough to move in these circles without God and, 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 and expect to maintain myself. It's the challenge that's before me, but it's not just me. It's us, because if God's to be glorified about the recovery, we have to maintain integrity and character. It has to be. 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm going to get out of your way. First Samuel chapter 30 and go to verse 1, please. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziklag had smitten Ziklag and burnt it with fire. Verse 2, and, the, and had taken the women captive that they were therein. They slew not any either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. I don't, I stop right there. We're going to go down to verse 8. But has anybody ever cried to the point to where you don't even have any more strength to cry? Come on. Has anybody ever been hurt to the point where where where? I, 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 I'm, I'm so engulfed and messed up in this situation that I, I don't even have any more strength to mourn, to, 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 to whine. I, I feel like my body's in so much pain that I don't even know if there's any more that I can take. The scripture, the scripture said that, that David and his men cried. The men cried. To the, to they had no more, no more strength to cry. That, 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 that's a tough spot to be in. That, that's a tough spot to be in. Yes, it is. I hear my grandfather sometimes tell a testimony about when you're heartbroken. There, there's, no, there's no medicine, no prescription that the doctor can give to heal a broken heart. Our overseer sites just say that God catches our tears in a bottle from, from crying and from hurt. 
And, 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 and what had happened is, is the backstory: the, the, the David had, had, had joined himself with this army, and while he was away, folk had come in and burned down his city. And, 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 and the Bible says that they, that they didn't take anything <laughs> because they burned it down. But they didn't kill anybody, rather, because they burned it down. But they took all their women, all their families, so much so that as I didn't get, Brother Gabe continues to read, that you'll get to the point where Scripture says that, 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 that the folks began to turn their back on David. Go down to verse 8 for me, sir. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Back up. Go to verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. Greatly distressed. For the people spake as stoning, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord and his God. <laughs> Oftentimes you hear that, that, that verse, that scripture talking about in church. David encouraged himself. He didn't just encourage himself because he was already having a good day. He encouraged himself because the folks that he was leading decided that, you know what, we're about to get this man up out of here. The Bible says that they were about to stone him because they blamed him for the loss of their loved ones. Their families were all taken away. The scripture says that they were about to stone David. And David had to realize that although it seems like the whole, <laughs> although it seems like the whole world's against me, I have to encourage myself. I'm here to tell you that it's, it's great to have loved ones and families and friends and brothers and sisters in Christ around you to pick you up in times when you're down. The Bible says that it's, you know, how, it's better to have two so that when you're down, the other one can pick you up. But sometimes on this journey, we're going to have to encourage ourselves. We're, we're going to have to know how to get in contact with God for ourselves. We're going to have to know how to find peace and solace in our relationship with him by ourself. We, we, David encouraged himself. Yeah, he did. But what happened that he had to do it? Because sometimes folk are going to seem like they turn their back on you. When mother and father forsake me, then God will. This is the question. Why does it seem like <laughs> we have to be forsaken by others? Me too. To, 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 to turn back to God for him to lift us up. Why, why does it seem like family and friends have to turn, do me wrong for me to find myself in the, in the place where I'm searching God to heal, fix, and, and, and lift me up? That's, that's a good question. I don't, I don't have the answer. <laughs> but when mother and father, I, I, I don't, it, it's rhetorical. But, 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 but it, I've been there. Sometimes we don't go and get stronger in God until we go through such a situation where we have no choice and nowhere else to turn. What, what made me come to the church and pray years ago is to, I was laid off and I had a lot of time on my hands. And I said, the only, <laughs> I'm, applying, I'm applying to jobs. I'm saying young, I'm, I'm applying to jobs and nothing's happening. Oh, God, you must want something from me. We have had to endure so much stuff before we finally go and submit to God. Why I was cleaning the bathroom? Because both of us were here cleaning the church because both of us were out of work. Well, listen, we can't work. We might work for God. Let's go, let's go on down to church on Wednesdays, bro. See you there, one. That, is, am I telling the truth? That's why we were here, because we weren't working. But in being here is when God began to start placing a desire for, this, for the ministry inside of us. And being here is, is when God started giving us a desire that, yeah, hey, we can help this place. And being here. It's when God started solidifying that, you know what, I'm going to use him, and I'm going to use him. It, it took us being pushed in those situations and circumstances, but I thank God for it now. I thank him for it now because it's why we're growing to being who God is calling us to be. And our encouragement to you is don't wait until things seem like you're at a dead end or don't wait until you seem like your back's against the wall. Find God while you yet have strength. And while the Bible says, find God in your youth. Find him when things are going well. Find him when your body's not aching in pain. Find him when things are going good on your job. Find him when your family seems to be loving you and showing you support. Find God when things are well. We don't have to wait until it feels like there's nowhere else for to go. God, hallelujah. Gabe, verse 11, please. And I'm going to get out of your way, I promise. So here, let me do this. So David went away while he was away and his army. 
folks came in and burned his city and they stole their families. David asked for the ephod, his priestly, the priestly garment, because that was the only uh, connection physically they had to, 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 to the sanctuary uh, and to the Ark of the Covenant, to the tabernacle. And he went and asked God, God, shall I go after? He couldn't ask his army if they were ready to go, if they, if they were willing to fight, because the scripture just told us that his army had turned their back on him and was ready to, to stone him. So, 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 so David grabbed the ephod and, and began to inquire of the Lord, shall I pursue these folks that have come and have done this to us? And the Bible says that God told him, go ahead and pursue, because you shall recover it all. And as they, David made up in his mind that he was going to go fight, after the folks have turned their back on him, after he was now pushed to go in to seek God, and God said, go ahead and pursue, you shall recover all, he happened to be walking through the fields. And the Bible says that, that he came upon an Egyptian. Uh, so, so, so you imagine being in the wilderness, undeveloped cities and undeveloped places, and all of a sudden there's a stranger, somebody left out what would seem to die. The Bible says the man told him that he hasn't eaten or drinking in three days. He was just out there. He was waiting on death. And David and the army came upon him. David asked the man, he said, hey, 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 where are you? Where, where are you from? What are you doing out here? And the man said, I'm an Egyptian, but I was fighting with the Amalekites. And while I was fighting with them, we did this, we did that, and we went and we burned down the city of Ziglag. Ziglag happened to be the city that David and them just, was just upset about because they lost everything that they had. But David, unlike most of us, <laughs> he didn't just say, get that man up out of here. He said, feed him. Give him something to drink. Nourish him back up to where we now can use him. Hey, 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 young man, hey, sir. You know that we have the power right now and the authority to take your life if we so desire but, what, what, do you mind showing us these people? Be, 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 you just burned down our city. We could take your life right now, but feed them, nourish them. And do you mind showing us where, the, where these men are? And the Bible says that the man said, yeah, I, I'll take you, but, but do, 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 do two things for me. <laughs> promise that you won't kill me, and promise that you won't give me back to the master that left me out here. And the Bible says that David and his men went to the place where he showed them. And the people that just burned down their city were in the field eating and drinking and chilling and, 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 and celebrating their victory. And David did what? Pursued and recovered all. Took back everything, all the families and their loved ones that they lost when their city was burnt down. Took them all back in this period, in this season of recovery. The scripture goes on to say, you guys got to read this in chapter 30. The Bible says that when he got back, there were some of David's army that didn't go and fight. He had 600 men. 200 men stayed behind because they were too weary to cross. They were too weary to fight. And David said, oh, it's not a problem. Let them stay where they head. We're going to go ahead and fight anyway because the victory was already, <laughs> there it is, the victory was already given to them. And when they got back, the people that decided to stay, those that went and fought said, you know what? We, we're not going to give them anything that we just gained here because they didn't go with us to fight. And David said, to him, David said to the men, he said, no, we're not going to do that, sir. He said, because although they stayed here and protected our stuff and we went to fight, we're all on the same team seeking this victory. Somebody say this, same team. Same team. Oftentimes, and, and, and in church, and we can say it even here too, we seem to be uh, at odds one with another, not realizing that we're on the same team. Victory comes from unity. Victory comes in oneness. The Bible says that David set an ordinance in place that regardless of what position you hold in the temple, in the sanctuary, in, in, in our, our gathering, our unity here, we're still on the same team. I have to respect what you do. You have to respect what I do. And we have to collectively make a decision that this is what we're fighting for. God wants to take us to places. He, wants to, he, he told us that, that we're in the right place. Sometimes we just don't do the right things. And God has greatness, mom, in store for us here. But we can't get there at odds with one another. The Lord told me this, and I'm going to take my seat. Gabe, I'm done. Thank you. The Lord told me this, Deacon James. Check this out. And you kind of said this actually last week, too. But check how the Lord said it to me. Preacher D, if we don't see the manifestation of what God wants to do, in this house. Not saying don't see it because he's not going to do it. But if our generation, if our time is not intent to see the fullness of what God wants to do here, 
are we still willing to push the, 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 the agenda and the purpose of what God wants to do a little bit further than where mom and pop dukes pushed it? If we don't see the fullness of what God wants to do, the people flowing and the ministries going and everything that God has promised us here, am I still willing to work to push the ball a little bit further down the field than where our leaders have taken it today? Or do we have to be a part of the glory of it all? And I said, God, what do you mean if I don't see it? It's not in my time. It's not in my time for me to, to for, 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 for God to do what he's promised us. The scripture says our times are in his hand. So it's in his time. And if it's his time is longer than me being here, am I still willing to work? Am I still willing to push it? Am I that committed to the ministry and to the purpose of God and the kingdom in this house to push it a little bit further? My, my, P P P Pastor Stephen, you, got, you guys have started this ball rolling. You started it. When you make a snowman, you start with just a little ball. And you add snow and you push it and you roll it until more and more snow begins to come into the ball. And then all of a sudden you have a body that you can start to build as a snowman. Think, think about that with me visually. Our overseer and our pastor were part of starting this thing. And they rolled it and they pushed it to the point where they're here now. And you know, though they're still strong and though they're still able, it's not on their shoulders to carry and push this ministry by themselves any longer. It's our time. But if we're not here to see the fullness of it, are we willing to still push it for the next generation, for LJ's kids and for my kids to see the manifestation of God's word? We just have to push it just a little bit further. We, we, that's, that's all we have to do. Push it a little bit farther, mama, than where you guys have said, okay, it, it, it's, your, it's your turn now. Bishop Sykes told you what, Mom? He said, he said that I, I've done what, what God has called me to do. I've set it everything up for you. I just need you to walk on in my shoes. Am, am I t is that what he told you? He, he, said, I, he said, I've done my part. And I've set it up where you just have to walk in my shoes. And it's now our turn to say, will we push this ministry further? Gabe, what if I don't see it? All the preaching and all the believing and all the sweating and all the screaming and all the yelling that I do. What if I'm not meant to, to be? A, M Moses led the people to the brink of the promised land. The Bible says he led them there and couldn't go in because of situations and circumstances that happened prior. He was able only to see. Martin Luther King gave a speech the night before he died. He said, I, I, I've been to the mountaintop. He said, I may not get there to this, to, to this place with you, but I've seen what it looks like. And the very next day, the man was assassinated. It's not guaranteed that all of us are going to see what God has promised this place. But if we're committed to what he wants to do, will you push it? Will you push love, oh God, that our pastor Stephen has been preaching this for years? Will you push togetherness, oh God, that overseer oversee and our bishop has been telling us for years? Will we push unity? Hallelujah. Will we push it? Oh God, that God's name can be glorified. That the altar will be open again for souls to come. That the church will be what God has called it to be. Will you push it a little bit further so that the next generation will have it easier than we do? Oh God. Deacon, will you help me push? Will you, help, will you help us push? If I don't see it, oh, God, oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us push. Oh, Jesus. Am I so caught up in myself that I have to be a part of every decision? Everything that has to take place has to go through me. I've got to give it the okay. That's not a mentality to push. If can't nobody else do nothing right if, it, if you're not involved? That's not a mentality to push. Oh, God. Will our baby see what God has promised this house? I'll tell you this. If we don't come together, they won't see it. God wants us. Oh, God. Simply to push. Push, push it forward. Push, push the ministry forward. Push his message of love forward. 
push this message of hope forward and push it beyond the walls of this sanctuary. Push it into the community. Push it to our neighbors. Push it to the babies. Push. Oh, God, push. 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 Push it to recovery. Push it to victory. Push. Push the ministry. Push the purpose. Don't push your agenda. Oh, God, push kingdom, push kingdom, push kingdom. Push kingdom, push kingdom, push kingdom, push kingdom, push kingdom. We push church long enough. We push church long enough. And I'm going to tell you something. The folks outside these walls, they don't like church. They like kingdom. Folks not coming to church, mom. It's the, it's the truth. It's the, it's the truth. You, you may not know it, but if you talk to some folks, folks don't like church because they don't like church people. Church people have an air that they have it all together and have struggles and issues behind the scenes that they want to make it seem like it's perfect. Church people have issues with one another where we're supposed to be in here loving together that we can affect somebody's lives outside of us. Folks don't like church. Folks want kingdom. God interrupted church for us to develop a mindset of kingdom. Will our babies, will our babies see the manifestation of what God wants to do in this house? Push. Push ministry. Push purpose. Don't push our own agenda. Push does this benefit where God wants us to go, not where we were, but where, where, where we're going. Push. We can't have the mindset of getting back to what we were. It has to be where God wants us to go. Because if where we were was good enough, then we would have been there by now. We've been doing it for 60 years. God wants us to go. Kingdom. He wants us to go forward. But it won't move unless we come together to push. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for telling us it's the season of recovery. This is your time to stand. Thank you for telling us this is our season of recovery. Thank you for being a God that is faithful and true and nothing that's too hard for you. God, we thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those that have been joining with us online, God. God, I ask that you continue to allow us to be unified, that we can come together for your purpose, come together with the kingdom mentality, God, to do not just what we've done, but what you're asking us to do in this day, that we can have an impact in our community, Impact on our babies, impact on, on the children nearby that need help, homes that need a hand, homes that need prayer, homes that need groceries, God. Help us come together, Lord Jesus, with the mindset to work. Let us take the attitude of Ruth, O oh God, and not just sit back, O oh God, but to go and be proactive into this season of recovery. God, we thank you that you love us enough to visit us, even in the midst of a few. God, we desire to give you glory. We desire to give you honor. We desire to give you. We submit, O oh God, to your will on today. In the mighty name of Jesus, draw us ever closer to you. Cleanse us, Father God, from anything that is not like you. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, hallelujah. Save those that need to be so saved, God. Deliver those that need to be delivered. You're still a miracle-working God. Still have all powers in your hand. And I thank you, God, that you still have the final say. Thank you for the season of open doors. Thank you for the season of miracles and manifestations. God, and we say hallelujah to your holy and righteous name. For you are a true living God. Give us the power to push. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the power to push, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And push for your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God.